Have you ever wanted to explore the furthest reaches of our planet on board a cruise ship? If so, keep watching Planet Cruise Weekly as this week, Glenn and I chat about expedition cruising. Well, hello and welcome to Planet Cruise Weekly uh, with myself, Keith, and the wonderful Mr. Glenn Wallace. Glenn, how, how are, you? are you? I'm good. Very well. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm excited, Glenn. I'm excited because this week it's all about expedition cruising, something that's been suggested several times, uh, and we're happy to oblige by looking at this. Um, and I suppose, Glenn, you could say that people are looking for more and more options cruising. They're getting more confident and, and I think people now, you know, people tend to start off doing a med cruise to start with, then they go, oh, well, let's go to the Caribbean and then they want to go Far East and Australia and, and things like that. But then you get people that are going, I want to do something to tick on the bucket list. We want to go places that, you know, you can't really get to on a lot of the land-based tours. Mm -hmm. So that's why places we're going to talk about, like the Amazon and Galapagos and Top and Tail, Arctic and Antarctica. Uh, uh, are, not, are not so popular because obviously they're niche markets but you do get the people that want to do this and as I said they are fantastic cruises. And in fact they're, they're regions which you can only really and truly explore via a ship. Now um, expedition cruising first of all the difference so expedition ships tend to be smaller uh, normally with around 100 passengers or even less uh, they've got shallow drafts uh, and of course they access far less visited out of the way ports where you can get, get access to some of these scenic wonders. And the big thing about this, Glenn, and I'm sure you'll agree here, is that with the, the expedition ships themselves, the focus on the entertainment and the activity and everything is the destination, it is the ports. Yeah. Um, and rather than having cruise directors, you will have a uh, expedition director, um, a team leader, if you like, who has a support staff of naturalists. I want to say naturalists. I'm not talking about people that walk people around. walking around naked. No, I'm not. <laughs> exactly. I knew <laughs> you'd say the that. That's sort of cruise I'm <laughs> <laughs> More, more people, of course, that are, uh, are going to be able to lecture to you about geology, about biology, uh, about the areas that you're cruising to. Uh, so it's what is classed by other companies as enrichment takes a massive focus with these particular lines. Of course it does. I mean, for example, like you're not going to get water slides. You're not going to get no. 50 different dining options. You are going there for the destination. That's it. Let, 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 less facilities on board. But there is still flexibility within the market, and we'll go into that. Now, one thing to remember, and I think this is a very good point, we were discussing this before, Glenn, the excursions themselves are more active. That said, they do divide you up into groups for fitness levels, so that if you are fitter, you can go and do a long kayaking of course. Uh, tour yeah. or a big hike, and then if you're not, you might do a wander along the beach. I think you've got to be sensible. You, you know, people have got to know their own limitations. So, That's right. And you don't want to stop other people as well. You don't. Moment. But that said, you could be someone who is, finds movement a little bit harder, um, who could still go on board and see so much just from the deck because these ships do take you right into the heart of the destinations. Now there are several companies that actually have dedicated expedition ships, Glenn. Um, so you've got the fusion there between getting that expedition experience yeah. and also getting the wonderful um, classic things like you know butter service and getting a hot shot with babies as you get back on board. Of course, I think I think you've got to realise. I think people speak. It's not going to be like Bear Grylls where no. you're going to go <laughs> off, have to swim to shore, and then go and live in a hut. So I think guests still want that little bit of class. So, you know, you'll go off for the day, you might have to get cold and a little bit wet, but you know that when you're coming back on, you, as I said, you've got your, your warm showers, you've got a bit of class. Well, Silver Seas currently have three um, expedition ships. Um, Seventy have one as well. They all offer gourmet food and this kind of butter service as well. And then you've also got lines that offer a more affordable um, expedition style cruising, such as Cruise and Maritime, who do a wonderful itinerary taking you down the Amazon, which I know you've done. I did it, yeah. I was mm. the tours manager on board uh, Marco Polo, and we do a 42 day cruise from Tilbury all the way along the Amazon. Um, and again, it's nice, because then you tag on the Caribbean at the end, so you go back to your normal ports. But going down that Amazon was spectacular. Um, very different from the Caribbean. I mean, a big player in the market, Herti Guten, of course, the Norwegian company. Uh, they offer a more traditional no-frills approach. Uh, but lots of different itineraries and lots of different ships going to lots of places. Um, and then at the top end, you've got Scenic, of course, um, who are really growing into this market. It's a luxury shop experience, um, a luxury shop, luxury yacht experience even, um, with a helicopter and a submarine on board, which really adds to that ability for you to explore. Well, you need that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you, need, you need a submarine. You do, you're Richard yeah. Branson. Yeah, exactly, you do. Yeah. So, but you get that experience anyway without the hot air balloon. Of Richard course. Branson. Uh, so lots and lots of choice. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at some of the most popular areas 
that expedition cruising get to explore. So the first most popular area, if you like, for expedition cruising is Alaska. And this tends to be the way that most people get their feet wet when they're getting a taste of expedition cruising. Because there's a lot of companies going out there that do traditional seven day or seven night explorations of Alaska. Yeah, we, we do a lot of these. So people do like a seven night Alaska cruise mm. and then they'll tag on a, a Rocky Mountaineer to the end of that or at the start or stays in Canada and that sort of stuff. And that's Princess Island America um, that do a lot of that. Um, and if you want more information, then click the link for that. However, what we're talking about here is a dedicated exploration of Alaska. And Silver Seas do a great one. They do a, they do a real uh, in-depth ex exploration. It's 15 nights altogether, isn't it? 15 nights, yeah. yes. And um, you know, a wonderful opportunity now. Of course, the smaller ships, that means you can navigate around the areas that normally only the short excursion craft the bigger ships could get into. And the big thing about this, Glen, is that because you're anchoring overnight in a really remote area, the majority of wildlife comes out at dawn and dusk. Exactly, so you can get up and see them or go just before you go. Well, you're in the areas, you're yeah. right there in the action where yeah, it happens, yeah. whereas normally you're, you're sailing into these areas at, at certain times and you can only hang around for a certain amount of time. The thing is, these ships are geared up for this area, so they, they know when the best time is to go and see the wildlife and the marine life and stuff like that, so that's when they're going to be there, which is good. Now, one warning is you will need a massive gigabyte memory card for your camera <laughs> if you do like wildlife photography because you're going to have so much opportunity particularly in Alaska. The primary season runs from May through to August um, and remember this is all about nature so this is your chance isn't it Glenn to get up close to icebergs and hear that snap crackle and pop as the exactly. air expands. It is, it is as I said it's a niche market if you're really into that sort of thing you absolutely phenomenal and again that time of year all right, you still wrap up, but it's not too cold, is it? So it's quite pleasant staying out the deck, looking at the views. You're not going to be freezing cold. Oh, so you still get your suntan and things like, um, you know, you might cru cruise on the um, the shoreline and you see bears and sea lions. So it's really, really incredible. And I've even spoke to people who've had a cheeky seal catching a ride on their boat. Now, one of the truly exciting areas for expedition cruising that certainly gets the hairs up on the back of your neck is is the Arctic. Um, and we're talking really here about the archipelago of Svalbard, as it's known, and like Antarctica, requires you to have, properly have an ice strengthened hull, which means it's a very short visitor season. I think it's mainly from June through to August because at other times of the year the pack ice is just That's too right. hard to break through. Yeah. Now, I believe you've visited this area with Cruiser Maritime. Yeah, well, the Marco Polo, which used to be called the Alexander Pushkin, was a twin hulled icebreaker, so we went up there and uh, we, we stopped at North Cape, which is normally the furthest point you go to, and then we just carried on up to Long Yvonne and Svalbard. And, you know, after a, couple of day, after a couple of days, we were looking at and hearing sort of crackling stuff, and that was the ice starting to go through the ice, and it was phenomenal. And, and everyone was out on deck. We saw the, uh, the walruses. We kept an eye out for all the marine life. Phenomenal, and the, and the passengers absolutely loved it. Uh, okay, so um, most tours for this uh, leave from either Tumzo or Longyearbyen, as, as Glenn mentioned before, uh, and they get to explore the whole of the Svalbard archipelago. Um, Silver Sleas do do, um, of course, their wonderful upmarket way of visiting this region uh, and have some great naturalist guides and some really, really good um, speakers on board. And also Hurtigruten, who are, of course, the Norwegian company um, and known as the fast route in, in Norwegian, and they know this area probably best. They've got some amazing itineraries. Now the best time of year to really see the most, particularly if you want to get polar bears, is July, isn't it Glenn? That's right, polar bears. And again, when you go up there, we went up into Longyearbyen into the, the wildlife area there, and they actually have guides that are there with guns to protect the, the guests. We actually got put on polar duty as staff members. We didn't have a gun, we had a pink umbrella each just to scare off the polar bear. So that Mate, wasn't you were the pink umbrella. Up. If I'm a polar bear, I'm coming nowhere near you. Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. You, like so, uh, what are you going to get? Well, naturalist-led guide, guided hikes across the, the spongy tundra to see Arctic foxes in their brown coats. Maybe to see the molting caribou, uh, the lazing walruses that Glenn spoke about. Um, you will see those armed polar bear guards that will accompany you. Um, and uh, Glenn with his pink umbrella, if you're really, really lucky. And carpets of wildflowers, uh, which are really beautiful against this brown and gray landscape. Plus, you get Zodiac rides that take you close to the icebergs, uh, the steep rocky cliffs that are full of thousands and thousands of birds that make this huge cacophony of noise. Um, so yeah, an incredible experience. Now, if you want to go on an expedition cruise, but go to slightly warmer climbs, let's say, than Which the Arctic is what and the Antarctic, prefer. this I is like what you'd like. Well, you're going to like this place, because off the, off the coast of, of South America sits, of course, the mighty Galapagos Islands. 
You will love this area. This is the part of the world that I've not yet been to that I've always wanted to go. You get another bucket list place that people it, you know, really it, want to go down to. It really, really is. And it's the kind of place where as soon as you go underwater, it gets even more exciting. 97% um, of the Galapagos Islands are, are a national park and they're protected uh, and tourism is strictly controlled. Um, so again, you, you need to be on a ship to visit this part of the world. Um, and for those who seek a bit of luxury celebrity expedition, is positioned there all season, which blends a kind of five-star pampering with a total immersion in the Galapagos. And on that note, uh, although they've got the expedition at the moment, Celebrity are also adding to the fleet, aren't two they? More, two more ships there, they're adding to the expedition program they have there, as I wow. said, because it is getting popular. And because it's only small numbers on each ship, you know, again, they get booked up. People think, well, people won't book They get booked up sort of almost a couple of years in advance. So that's why if you're thinking of these sort of things, you've got to start getting the wheels in motion and start getting booked. Now, scenic uh, cruises also uh, are going to visit this, this area occasionally, which gives you that luxury yacht experience and the helicopter and the submarine. Now, because the Galapagos straddle the equator, you've got a warm tropical climate, which relatively is unchanging. And the big attraction here, of course, is diving and, and, and snorkeling. You know, if you are someone that likes to get in the water, because if you do get in, you will be rewarded with schools of, of hammerhead shark, uh, all sorts of whales, diving sea lions. Um, it's amazing. But you don't have to do that just to get just to get wet. You don't have to get wet to really enjoy it because, of course, if you do go on the islands themselves... Of course, you've got the animals and all Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's kind of like feeling like you've gone back to, you know, journey to the centre of the earth and you've gone the back o to the dinosaurs The only thing I can existed. sort of envisage it being like is when I used to go to Komodo with the dragons. You know, yeah. that sort of thing. You're there, no one's there, and then suddenly a dragon walks past. And I think that's going to be very similar to the Galapagos. It and again, is. as I said, you know, there's very few places in the world now that are untouched. You know, you know, these places we go to now, they're all very commercial now. But the places we've been talking about today are still as, as untouched as they've ever been and, and, and worth a visit before they become too commercialised. Absolutely. So Galapagos Islands should be top of your list for expedition cruising. Okay, right, I want to say thank you to all these people as well that have been getting in touch. Um, and uh, so a big thank you to uh, Sonia Davison. Um, now, Sonia uh, is wonderful. She's been, uh, just, well, she just got back from Harmony of the Seas, had a wonderful cruise there with her, with her hubby. Uh, and she's been tweeting about it loads, saying about how much she enjoyed um, her At Planet Cruise experience on board. Um, so uh, if you want to see some of Sonia's tweets, it's at JST Pumpkin. Uh, and have a look at some of the photos she's been posting. Uh, and we'll all see you, Sonia, at the Planet Cruise show on Sunday. Can't wait. And also Nick Tavender, um, who's really looking forward to catching up with us at the show. Nick, I know you're a big fan of, of the programme, so we'll look forward to seeing you then. And of course, we want people to get in contact. This show is, is sculpted, it's created around your comments, around your feedback, and around what you want to see. So please do tell us. There's a number of different ways. You can uh, check us out on Facebook, YouTube. We've got hello at planetcruise.co.uk. You can email us, or you can send a carrier pigeon with a message. Any way you want to get hold of us, get in contact with us, and we're more than happy to answer any questions you may have. I believe at some point soon we'll be looking at Queen Mary 2's new refit. Our old home. Our old home, mm -hmm. exactly, which is very, very exciting. Well, thank you very much for watching. Whatever you do, have a wonderful uh, week month, year, and we'll hopefully see you soon. See you guys. Bye-bye.